Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today we're going to look at the remote Wireshark capturing utility called RPCAPD. This is an update from my original documentation since Wireshark made quite a few application changes. That basically made it easier to use, so fewer steps. I try to use this option when I don't have a mirror port or tap. When the devices are connected to unmanageable switches or switches that are controlled by carriers or other companies. Lastly, I try to use this when the client is not geographically close to me and I just want to get a quick capture. I would strongly suggest and urge that you test this feature in your environment to better understand RPCAPD's limitations, quirks, and load that it generates on your network. So we're going to go to the remote computer that we want to capture from and we're going to get the IP of the computer which in this case is 10.44, 10.101 and we're going to start RPCAPD from that same computer so we're going to go to their program files WinPCAP folder which means you need WinPCAP installed on that machine not necessarily Wireshark just the WinPCAP driver and from the command prompt we're going to type RPCAPD space minus n and that basically means run the driver with null authentication and you'll see what that means in just a moment now we'll go to our Wireshark computer where we're going to do our capturing and we're going to go to the capture options screen which is under capture or capture options uh, as well as control K when you do that the interface list default is local we're going to change that to remote and then when the remote connection box appears on the screen we're going to type the IP address of the remote device which in this case is 10.44 10.101 and the default port number for RPCAPD is 2002 this is where that authentication comes in I'm using null authentication which is not a big deal because again I'm going to shut down that remote service when I'm done with it when we type that in we'll get prompted with the various network interfaces that we can capture from. The big tip is when you select the interface the IP address of that interface is displayed so for example this bottom interface uh, we've got the D-Link Gigabit Ethernet controller and its IP address is 10.101 some of my captures may involve interfaces with no IP stack which again there would be no IP address there to see so it's a good way to figure out which one you're using or wanting to capture from when we start capturing I in this case I went to the remote capture settings box and I unchecked do not capture your own RP cap traffic and basically I just want it to generate and capture its own remote software's driver so RP cap is using port 1448 as well as 2002. I'm not quite sure why, but it does. I also noticed that my dropped counter uh, kind of went through the roof as I was capturing these RPCAP uh, packets because RPCAP is fairly intensive. I don't see that dropped counter go up very often in the real world when we have users with typical applications. I'm suspecting this is a packet rate issue, with too many frames per second, but I'm not quite sure. The average throughput ranged from 500k to 5 meg for the remote overhead to capture these packets. So that's uh, pretty well it. Thanks for watching the presentation. It's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm and have a good day. Bye for now.